Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're going to keep talking about causal inference and causal methods and specifically potential outcomes. At the end of the last video, I know we talked a lot about these different sort of breakdowns in terms of the treatment effect, and I just want to go over that one more time just to make sure that everyone's clear. If you haven't seen the past video, this will also just be a good review of the average treatment effect on the treated, selection bias, average treatment effect, and difference in means. Again, in terms of thinking about what we're actually estimating when we try to assume the causal impact. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go right into it. So here is the example we saw last time where we had three people and we're trying to estimate the effect of owning a cat on your stress level. So we said that your outcome is stress level between 0 and 10 and your treatment value is a 1 if you own a cat and a 0 if you don't. So we had these three people, Bill, Deborah, and Christy, where we said that Bill and Deborah were treated, they own a cat, and Christy was a control or an untreated person because she does not own a cat. That's reflected by the fact that their Y1s and Y0s are green for their respective X value. Now, if we tried to just observe the effect, we would take the average of these two numbers here. We would subtract the average of Christie's number, and we would get the difference in means, and that would be what we estimated as the average treatment effect. But in reality, if we knew everything about every person, then the actual effect would be this average treatment effect here, where we would just take the average of the 1, the negative 3, and the minus 4. So why might those things be different? Well, what goes into that difference of means, or the average of the 7 and the 2 minus the 8, there are two things that go into that average. The first is called the average treatment effect on the treated. So we would take the average of yi1 and minus yi0 just for treated people. So that's called the average treatment effect on the treated. We also have something called selection bias, where in this case, Chrissy is more stressed than Bill and Deborah if no one owned a cat. So those three people are not necessarily the same in terms of treatment versus non-treated group. We call that the selection bias. Notice again, that is an unobserved decomposition of the difference in means that we actually see. We don't see the average treatment effect on the treated. We don't see the selection bias. But if we find an estimate on the difference in means that's very different than the true average treatment effect, it's possible that selection bias or the average treatment effect on the treated is causing our estimate to be sort of thrown off. So let's just take that same example and do all the numbers. So first we could find the observed effect. Again, like I said, the average of the seven and the two minus the eight. So that's gonna be four and a half minus eight, which is minus 3.5. So what we see in the data is that it looks like having a cat reduces your stress by 3.5 points. But if we look at the unobservables, we would see that the average treatment effect on the treated is actually minus one because Bill has a treatment effect of plus one and Deborah has a treatment effect of minus three. So they have a average treatment effect of those treated people of minus one. The selection bias, notice that the average stress level here between the treated people is like five and a half. The average stress level here is like an eight. So if I took that difference, it would be minus 2.5, which tells me that actually Bill and Deborah are on average less stressed out than Christy. The treatment group has a lower average stress level when they don't have a cat compared to Christy. Again, I don't care that in this world, Bill and Deborah are hypothetical people because their real versions have cats. All I'm comparing is the y of zero, and we see that that difference is minus two and a half. I know that the unobserved selection bias plus the unobserved average treatment effect has to be equal to the observed difference in the means. And if I just knew the average treatment effect, I would get that of minus two. So what I wanna say here is that here selection bias is making it so that what we estimate for the average treatment effect through this difference in means is going to be much different than the true average treatment effect, which if we knew everything, we could know it's minus two. So here, I'll just take that same example and turn it into what we actually see in the data. So actually in the data, we see that Bill and Helena have a cat. Maybe Steven does not have a cat but I have no idea what any of these other numbers are. So the only way that I can try to estimate an average treatment effect is through that difference in means. Now we get an estimated average treatment effect of minus five through that difference in means calculation. But if Bill and Helena are much different than Steven, this estimate could be way off. So what I want to do with these causal methods is I want to reduce selection bias because if selection bias was zero, then I could say, well, then this probably is the actual average treatment effect because Bill and Helena are exactly the same as Steven, except for Bill and Helena have cats and Steven does not. And so the only difference between those stress levels would have to be attributed to the fact that Bill and Helena owned a cat and Steven did not. Just to make that more clear, I want to know the true average treatment effect. I don't have the information to know the average treatment effect. I have the information to calculate a difference in means, 
And if I assume that the selection bias is zero, I could say the average treatment effect on the treated is also equal to the average treatment effect. So what we want to do with these causal methods is we want to find a way to ensure that the selection bias is zero so that we can do this ATE estimation using our difference in means. As we talk about these different methods, we're gonna keep coming back to the fact that we're trying to make it so the treatment and the control group are comparable so that the differences between the treatment group and the control group must be due to the treatment. So hopefully this makes some intuitive sense. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment below if you still have questions. We will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.